Good morning, DevOps people. It's a Sunday. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, changed my, my live streaming times quite a bit. Um, and if you were hoping for uh, sessions last Thursday and yesterday, I apologize. Um, things just didn't work out. And to be honest, uh, I was quite frustrated by how poorly uh, my recent sessions turned out, um, especially uh, looking at the quality of code I was able to produce uh, in the last two weeks or so. And um, I also kept um, growing more and more fatigued, if that's the right word. Um, and. Um, so I decided to change things up a bit in multiple ways. First of all, um, no more late night sessions. Um, I switched to later streaming times, hoping I could reach more people. But uh, in the end, um, the only thing, the only effect this had was that I was completely spent from a whole workday and um, really couldn't think straight anymore. And uh, looking at uh, the little code I was able to, to build, um, my brain really must have not been working properly. So I decided to do um, my future streams in the morning, even if that means that people across the pond will be still in their beds. Um, so my next regular slot will be on Tuesday morning at um, 10 a.m. Irish time. And uh, I plan to do another session on Fridays at the same time. And today's stream is just because I <laughs> was... Uh, first, I, I wanted to, to uh, test how early mor or morning... Um, sessions would work. It's not that early anymore, even though I'm still having my first coffee. And second, to be honest, I really wanted to do some coding today um, after skipping um, my uh, regular scheduled, uh, regularly scheduled uh, sessions on Thursday night. And uh, yesterday also didn't come together because of uh, chaos here at the house. And um, yeah, and I thought, well, if, I, if I'm if i doing some coding, um, I might as well broadcast it. So, welcome to the stream. This is uh, Full Stack Live, my DevOps um, live coding stream, where I do um, the things that I have to do in my job as the CTO of a small web hosting company called Frysteel IT. Um, I'm mostly doing either infrastructure automation um, using Chef, or I'm doing web development using Ruby on Rails. Um, th this is uh, quite convenient for myself because uh, both of these, um, say, frameworks are based on Ruby, and I really love the language. Today I'm going to do a bit more work on my hosting dashboard that our customers are using to manage their websites on our hosting platform. So this is a live project that's in production and um, I'm working on it. And uh, as I've touched on already, uh, I haven't made much progress uh, in with implementing new features um, simply because uh, I try to do the work at the wrong time of day. So let's see how things will work out on a Sunday morning. I hope every one of uh, you out there is well. Um, weather is quite nice. It's cloudy outside here uh, in Ireland, but um, at least uh, the sun comes through a bit. Let's see how things work out. I have a very quiet house, which um, is quite a relief because uh, the rest of my family is out camping. I couldn't join them because I am on call this weekend. And uh, to be honest, um, I'd rather 
stay at home recovering from the week than spending all my energy trying to keep a tent dry. Alrighty, so let's see where we left off. So what I was going to do was um, uh, implement a schema change or implement code based on a schema change. So um, here you can see uh, the relevant parts of our database schema. And I'll quickly explain how, uh, where, where I am at the moment. Um, so you can see um, at the root of all evil is the customer's company. And customers usually have one or more hosting clusters, which means complete um, server uh, groups with application servers, database servers, memcache servers, whatever else they have. Uh, each cluster has its own SSH login server as well. And um, the main purpose of these clusters is to run websites. So the websites are attached to their cluster. And since um, websites can have um, uh, lists of domains, for example, or multiple databases, there are um, additional auxiliary models attached to a website like aux domain or database. There are many more, but uh, that's not relevant in this context. And if we go back to the top here, uh, each company also has users. The website user roles model here is what's new, so I'll uh, leave that out for a second. Um, just to make the point that if I wanted to know if a user is allowed to make changes to a website, I had to go up to cluster and then up to company and then check if the company's users um, contain the user uh, who wants to change the website. That's quite complicated and tedious and it's very unflexible as well um, because um, users of one company can't access websites of another company's cluster. Which doesn't sound like much of a problem at first, but, but um, let me um, clarify that most of our customers are web agencies. So um, they maintain a lot of websites for a lot of customers who might have their own account with us for billing purposes. And that's when uh, it really becomes a problem that users can't access websites across companies. And that's why I've introduced an, a change recently that added this website user roles um, schema, um, which allows me to short circuit be between users and websites regardless of company affiliation. So um, that should make things much more easy and uh, much more flexible. By the way, um, I'm uh, holding a monologue here. Um, if there's anything you'd like to ask, if there is anything you'd like me to explain more, and uh, if there is anything you'd like to share in terms of feedback or other things, please pop into the chat. I love it when these things here get interactive. All right, that's where we stand. The website user roles schema um, is added. And um, I've also added code that if a user creates a new website, this user automatically gets registered as the owner of this website. So uh, uh, the user gets associated with the website through website user roles. And website user roles has an additional attribute named uh, access level that um, in this case assigns the user the owner access level. What I now would like to do is um, go further with auto populating this uh, table here by adding all users that make changes to a website, because they are 
uh, in the right company, um, get added to the website user roles as contributors. So um, that's what I'm about to do. However, looking at my code that adds the owners, I realized I really must have been very, very tired when I built this. Because the whole um, adding an owner logic ended up in the website's controller. And no, not even in the, uh, yes, I think it's in the website's controller, but these are the specs. Let me close this. I'm confusing myself here and everyone else in the program in the process um, website here we go um, yeah. see I can't even find it because it's in the cluster model While it makes sense that the cluster has logic to add a website, because um, this website will inherit a few details from the cluster. For example, it will be assigned the cluster's default PHP version for example, or something like that. Um, going ahead and adding the owner logic here as well certainly was not clearly thought out. That should be um, responsibility of the website itself, because um, a cluster doesn't necessarily have to know um, what an owner is and what an owner of a website does. That's just too far remote. If we go back to the, the model here, uh, from cluster through website to the user role and to the user that's that doesn't look like uh, look right does it and um so i li i'd like to start with transplanting this logic um into the website model uh let me get uh, this cleaned up here um i've just made Small change here. Oh, and if it looks like um, I can't type, that's because I made a change that, I, that I'm going to explain in a minute. Um, remove. So that was just a dead end here. So what I've did what I've done is um, I changed my keyboard layout so that I'm finally forced to use the shift key on the right, on the proper side. So um, what I've basically done is I've disabled the left shift key for the left half of the alphanumeric block, um, which forces me to use the right side shift key for these keys. Um, as you do in touch typing, but I've never, um, um, I, I never got used to this uh, over decades of typing, and uh, I've decided to um, force myself into the habit of using the proper shift key with uh, letters, and that's why many of my capital letters will uh, need uh, two or more tries at the moment because I just made this change yesterday. Okay, yeah, nerds. So, um, let's do a quick refactoring here. And um, I'll... Simply change this that I get a website here. And after that, I simply call 
a yet to be built method assign owner with the current user and uh, that means I can merge two other methods but let me move this first so this more or less needs to move to website and that's exactly the right place for it and we'll call it assign owner we don't have to pass in the website anymore uh, because that's our that's that's us um, assign owner user and uh, I call website user roles create. Oh, did you see that? Um, so that um, should already uh, have had raised an alarm because of a law of Demeter violation. Here, I'm calling uh, from the cluster. I call it. I'm calling website website user roles and then dot create. So I'm, I'm calling across two. Uh, levels of, of abstraction and that already should have raised a red flag at this point but it didn't because I simply didn't think straight. So we go into our website user roles and in there we create a user with the access level owner and that's it. This also should be a no, it can't be a private method uh, because we are calling it from the outside. So um, let's go back to our cluster. And since we've merged everything into the create cluster website, I can move this. No, I don't. Uh, create website, which is the main method that's get called here when we add a web website, is uh, long enough as it is. We can even remove the create website owner call here. And we'll simply call create cluster website. Is this a private method? No, well, it's not, and it should be. Create website is public but to create cluster website can be made private which is always good so we create a website and we assign an owner and this needs to needs to happen how did we get the current user before I made all these changes create website owner There was a user passed in. Where did this user end up? Oh, create website gets a user, right? And so it. So this way we get the user. We don't have current user because we're not in a controller. <laughs> uh, 
and the websites controller that triggers everything shouldn't need any changes. We call create website here. We pass in into create website, we pass in the user and the attributes. And that's that. Everything else is hidden in the cluster model. Here we pass in the user and the attributes, which we pass on to create cluster website. Uh, in this case, owner. Yeah, so let's rename this to owner. I think that's much cleaner than before. And it should work as before. So let's see if mm, our spec spec still works. I don't think I've changed any public API here, so this should still be working as expected. <laughs> Seeing my prompt um, uh, reminds me that if you haven't seen the Starship project yet, um, I recommend you check it out. Um, Starship is a um, shell prompt that's um, cross-shell compatible, so you can use it with Bash or C shell or Fish or whatever, because it's uh, written in Rust, uh, so it's quite fast and uh, only has a single binary, and uh, it allows you to define shell prompts that will work across different shells. So if you're using, say, C shell on your workstation, but bash on, on your servers or something like that, um, starship.rs um, is the website. It allows you to define a single um, shell prompt that works everywhere. And it has a few nifty things like um, it comes uh, by default with uh, showing the current directory. If you are logged in via SSH, it also shows your username. Uh, or if it, the username is different from what you've logged in, uh, it shows the branch and uh, the state of the branch and uh, even shows the uh, version of the runtime language you're using. In my case, I'm using Ruby 2.4.5 at the moment, which I should upgrade as well. Oh, these are much too many red Fs. So... Okay, websites create. So wait. Here, create website. Cluster create website should return a website, which it doesn't anymore. Uh, and that's because I've added the owner here. So this needs to return the website. And then, yeah, okay, that was the, the error, I guess. It's so great to have tests. I don't know how, how I would make these changes without being drenched in sweat if I uh, didn't have these ch tests that have my back.
Alrighty, this worked. So let's uh, commit this stuff. Okay, uh, refactor. Uh, website owner assignment. This, see, right shift T. This. Logic doesn't belong to cluster. Hey, I got the capital C at, in my first try. It doesn't belong to cluster. It belongs to and capital W. So, uh, I'm curious how long it'll, it'll take me to get used to my right shift change. Okay, okay, that's that. Now we can make the change that I originally intended to make, which is adding collaborators to a website if the website gets changed. So I guess um, let's take a look at the Websites controller spec. If someone makes a change, uh, we post an update. The user should become a collaborator. So, um, let's simply use this Setup. We create a test cluster with uh, status one, or rather, we do have access to these enums. So, cluster statuses. active. This is much better than strange numbers. And uh, zero means provisioned. Status is provisioned. I was even able to use the deleted symbol here. I'm not sure if that's actually correct. So let's make this cluster statuses and then we'll simply wrap this into brackets. So that's that. Okay. And this multiple expectations exception could be at a more specific place, I guess, because there's only so many yeah. 
Okay, so we can... Wrap this... Uh, This here. And we also should be able to fix this eventually. These are sins of the past. Of course, I haven't finished my method here. So, uh, create an active cluster, uh, we create a website, we post an update a bogus update to be honest and then we should expect the websites collaborators to include the current user which is um, wait uh, how does this work uh, Current user spec controllers controller dot current user uh, I guess that's Okay, this has become too long, so... We'll indent this. Good. So, um... This will break for multiple reasons, uh, because um, first of all, I don't think we have a collaborators method yet, and uh, of course uh, we don't have the logic to actually add the current user as a collaborator. So let's give this a spin in our spec, just to see the red. Yeah, this doesn't work, and then we also have breakage here. Of course, of course. Oh man, I made my changes a bit too rashly uh, because we're talking about website statuses and not about cluster statuses. Okay, uh, status, cluster status, that's a cluster, that's a cluster, that's a cluster. Fortunately, this is a cluster and only this website
Okay. Just a single side effect. Tests. I love them. Yep, one failure. Okay. So let's go back to our website. Uh, we need to teach our website to know what a collaborator is. I think it already knows what an owner is. Yeah. So we can simply take this code and duplicate it. Collaborators. Users where access is collaborator. And uh, collaborator is a thing, right? Yeah. It's also the default. Okay, this should change the test outcome. To fail the actual test. Let's see what it did fail. Param is missing. Huh. That's not what I expected. So let's go back to our controller spec. Does work in, in, in one instance and it doesn't in the other? That's strange. How does that work? Did it work so far? Because I see us passing in an ID. But no other parameters. So, should we not pass in website? I've struggled with controller specs recently and I'm not sure if I should put time into fixing them, or simply, as I did in the other case, switch to request specs. But let's find out uh, how this is supposed to work in the first place. Um, R spec Rails controller. Controller specs. Here we go. Okay, get is easy. So let's uh, search for update.
Wait, these are integration tests. That's not what I want to see. Let's look at this. Okay, so uh, this uh, confirms my recent switch to uh, request specs because I was testing the API, which is testing for a machine client. System specs. That's completely new to me. Some reading for the weekend, huh? However, how am I supposed to pass in my parameters? Back to basics. Jeez. Looks identical to <laughs> That's the same article I, I just had. Just on a different website. Folks, you need to be more creative. You can't just copy. Says the guy scarring websites to copy some code. Um, fuck me, where is an example for an update call? Because I'm not even sure, wait, what am I calling here? I'm calling post to update stuff. That's not right, is it? it should be calling patch. I wonder why I don't even get uh, routing errors here. You see, uh, this is code that's years old and uh, I haven't touched it in quite a while, so this might already uh, might actually be of pretty bad quality in terms of how, how uh, in terms of doing things right. So don't think I've built this recently. That's from my first steps in Rails. So it's good to, to invest the time to make this a bit more clean. So that's definitely not right. Controller spec. Post create, that makes sense. But uh, well, let's try things out. Um, how did I go about using patch at other places? Patch spec controllers. Okay, so I've only used it in, in the API part. <sighs> Still, it's strange why the same code works here and doesn't work there. So here we actually put an update. What I'd really like to do is patch 
So I call patch and pass in ID and an article, and we're talking about what? We're actually talking about an article. So how about we call patch on update, pass in, uh, yeah, I think using params is the current standard, and then we pass in an ID, and we pass in the current website without any changes. Not sure if this gets transformed right, but we'll see. break, but why does it? Undefined with permit for seven uh, string. I don't want to pass in all the attributes, though. I'd rather do something like, okay, change main domain to... example.com And let's uh, focus on this to speed things up. is missing again. I'm really confused. This is very strange. So let's assume we use patch here because we only make a small change. Update ID user and then user user. So here the user model gets passed in actually. Which is stra strange syntax with specify, uh, I'm seeing this for the first time here, but, and uh, I really don't like these let and before callbacks because they jumble things up. But uh, what's relevant for me is uh, I can actually pass in the website model. Now let's read on with update action and strong parameters. Okay, that's the solution for the example. Okay, fine. So let's return to, oops. Okay, let's read 
do this. No? So I'll actually pass in the full website here. Oh, I'm changing the wrong example, even though this probably also needs to be updated. Something in my code must be very strange that these simple things don't work. It's probably because I haven't updated a few things since I started building this application with Rails 4. we leave off I still don't see uh, Documentation could be a bit better. Params are subscription and then the stuff. So we are talking about subscription controller. So I don't have to actually pass in the ID and that's probably the, the problem that I am getting so I'm taking this out simply passing in my website I still have no idea why this actually breaks. So now I'm getting a problem with the update and patch, which is also strange. I guess if I 
call it the post, it will work. No, as far as I know, it's not supposed to work. So let me see how this is uh, defined here. Website self as show edit update destroy. Patch or put, update a specific photo, and post is only to create it. see um, app rails routes oof that doesn't look good really stupid uh, having these strange errors here with a test suite that did work before so here we have uh, website edit and we actually have get patch put and delete and somewhere we should have Post new cluster website. Oh. oh no, we haven't defined website create in the controller in the first place. So um, yeah, so we should have a patch method that refers to websites update. Exactly as I expected it to be. that I'm using an, a version of RSpec Rails that is far too old. That might be the case. So we're talking about Which version? It's probably...
version RB. We are 3.9.0. And we are using... Three seven. It's not too old. Okay, I don't see a need to update here. <sighs> if any of you have uh, an idea why this is not working for me, um, I'd be I'd appreciate any hint. These th simple things should work. No idea why I don't. So my morning schedule doesn't remove any, uh, or doesn't remove all of the mysteries I'm encountering. Hey DS, how are you doing? Welcome to the stream. Very, very strange. Yeah. So let's return to my original search. Thanks for following DS. Happy to have you. Okay, let's see. Factory go build patch update. So this looks strange, but okay. So let's actually pass in the ID. I guess that might be why I'm getting a routing error. 
And I guess let's format this in, in a more readable way. Okay, now I am passing in the ID, and that ID But now the website gets uh, returned as a string. That's not right. Let's try Passing in a hash instead, where we say main domain example.com, so we don't pass in a whole bunch of stuff, we simply pass in a different domain, which is a common change in practice. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. No idea why this... Okay, so this up here actually does work because, um, yeah, we pass in the ID, no parameters at all. So actually it doesn't do any changes. It doesn't have to because it should only render not available. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, clarity at last. Well, now we have the expected test failure because the association relation to our website user roles does not include the current user. And that brings us to implementing the actual business logic here, mm, which belongs into the website. Websites controller. Right. Here. We are calling update somewhere. And calling attempt to update. In the process, and then we call website update and checking everything. And that's where we add website assign collaborator current user. And that means we need to add, add a method to website, which looks exactly like this one, only Collaborators include user, website user was create user access level collaborator. I guess we can simply do a return if owners include user or collaborators include user. 
And if that's not the case... We add them as a collaborator. I guess that's what we need, and let's see if this works. yet because we don't have the assign collaborator method and we don't have a website um, wait what in websites controller 106 That's not uh, website's controller. Okay, that's at website actually. Okay. Yay! Now, how to differentiate between owners and users? Because that has now already appeared here, where we assign a collaborator. If a user is already an owner, we don't have to add them as a collaborator as well. And um, I guess <laughs> Wait, where does this actually? Yeah. Because here we're checking that we are adding the user as a collaborator. So if you have a cluster that already has the user as an owner, then it will not work. I guess we should have a more generic method here well we do we have the whole website user roles association Do have website users as a as a scope, right? Has many website has many users through website users. So the users should okay. Fine. So actually the website users should include well we could use collaborators
And then check. So we create a user. Well, now this gets complicated because I have to use the old model. User with a company or something. And then we create the cluster for this company. Okay. How does this work? User with company or something. Uh, spec controllers, yeah. User with company. Owner equals create user with company. We create the cluster. with this company. Then we create the website. For this cluster. Then we create a website user role for this website for this user. Jeez, Louise. Website user role. Website user role. Access levels owner. And yes, we'll have to what? Oh, man. So we have an owner, uh, we have a cluster that is accessible to this owner. I have a website and the user has already been added as a direct owner here. Um, and we'll have to log in this user. this work? Login active user. Oh, of course, uh, if we have a current user, we don't have to create one. 
That'll make things easier. So, where are we? Here we are. So we don't have to create an owner. We simply say controller current user company Let's find out how to align this later. And of course, uh, this is a not to. Uh, Does work. However, it's very complex and Rubocop complains about the length of this uh, example here. How can we make this a bit shorter? We already have the create test cluster method, which we are using. Maybe we are duplicating stuff. Who knows? Uh, yeah, the cluster already belongs to the user's company, so let's uh, duplicate it here. Do we also have a status? No, we don't. Okay, so we'll have to pass in the status. Makes sense. Now we are at least one line shorter. Still too much stuff. Jeez, Louise, what am I doing? Uh, see, that's something I th I don't think I'd have noticed uh, when I'm doing the streams in the evening. I'm completely duplicating the um, add assign owner um, method here. So we st simply have to say website assign owner. Control a current user. And get rid of this stuff. Nice. Oh, 
OK. Let's uh, remove the focus. I'd like to change this pose to patch because it really doesn't make any sense. And I hope this won't break anything. But it really sets a bad example. I guess I can finally close this issue today. run the whole test suite. And I guess I can do a bit of git foo in the meantime. So this
Okay. Let's see. We can merge these commits here as cleanup. Okay. Still testing. So let's not break things by changing files mid test. More coffee. And let me quickly open the window. A bit of fresh air. And since it's a Sunday, it's pretty quiet outside. What's that noise? Hmm. Am I offline or something? Looks like it. Looks like I've been offline for a while. Strange. Even though stream health didn't display any issues. How odd. Well, anyway, I'm sorry if I if I dropped out for a while. I didn't notice that uh, there were issues because the music kept playing. Um, maybe it's something on Twitch's side as well. So uh, all tests went green. So I can actually go ahead and rebase my commits and send a merge request. Git rebase upstream, which is a is an alias to rebase against origin master. So we have extract delegation logic from Chef Storable. Yep, and we had to rename delegable to composable because delegate is already a word used in Rails, and we'll um, revert this 
and fix up these things as uh, clean up. I'll leave this commit in because it really demonstrates how the it demonstrates the effects of a weary brain and that's the main change I'd like to keep. So we'll simply commit this as cleanup. And now we have four commits, three of which are relevant. So guys, if you could let me know if I actually did drop out uh, in the last five or ten minutes, um, that would grant. Um, I really don't know what happened. My video preview suddenly stopped uh, running and uh, my broadcasting software also showed a, a little red icon that I didn't had, have any connection, even though the stream health that Twitch showed me was, was alright all the time. So um, I'm not really sure what happened and if uh, I did broadcast or not. I'll probably see in the VOD, but uh, I'm really curious. Okay, so let's do a git push force. And as uh, suggested, oh, it doesn't recognize everything as an SD URL, does it? Does not look like it would work. No, it's cut off. Uh, that's a pity. So I guess I'll try and copy everything here. This is better. Nope, doesn't work as expected either. Because this is more like it. So, do we already have a commit that, um, describes the actual change. Add user changing website. Yeah, the, the most recent one, right? So let's paste this in. And assign it to me. It's part of the user-centric world changes I'm making. Uh, add my colleague as a reviewer, even though it doesn't need any approval. We'll change this, we'll squash the changes. And yeah, we'll leave this running. This should finish properly. We don't expect these tests in, in CI to fail. And uh, I guess that's that.
Okay. Well, that was a nice little Sunday exercise. And I'm happy to have this finished finally. Uh, I still... So let's uh, make a few notes here. So I actually started broadcasting. Uh, Changes, goals were. Uh, I need to get used to my shift key. Add uh, the current user as a collaborator if they make a change to website. I, I write this with a capital W because I like to refer to the model. If they make a change to website and aren't an owner already. So what did we learn? Um, I need to catch up on controller and system specs because I've never heard of system specs before. Um, I need a way to notice stream dropping out. If that's the case. So next steps will be, I guess, uh, display now that we are populating our websites with users owners and collaborators um, I guess it's time to show who is already registered as a website user so that uh, people can actually see what uh, is already collected. And um, then I guess uh, we'll have to build a UI where users can add owners and collaborators themselves so that we can completely switch to this way of authorizing people instead of the old convoluted way. But uh, yeah, that'll be a bit more work. And I'll have to think this uh, through a bit more and create some issues in our issue queue. But for now, I guess uh, that's, uh, that's it. Which brings me to the end of my stream for today, I guess. It's time to wrap things up. I hope um, the stream uh, wasn't disrupted too much. And um, so uh, after wrapping this up, I'll also post a link to the VOD to my Discord server to which you are invited. Um, Here's the URL. Feel free to join. Um, subscribers will even get uh, additional perks. For example, I'm thinking about um, uh, allowing subscribers to schedule a, a half hour call with me uh, if they want uh, to pair or have my opinion on things. Um, so, uh, and uh, most importantly, uh, we can continue our conversations uh, in Discord. Feel free to join there. I'm not sure if I'll keep uploading these recordings to YouTube because um, they are oftentimes pretty ephemeral and I don't think preserving them uh, makes too much sense. 
Not sure about that. If you like, let me know. You can reach me here. You can reach me on Discord. You can reach me on Twitter. I'm at GWiz. Uh, it's also uh, in the footer down below. Uh, so if you think it's worth uh, preserving these streams on YouTube, uh, as I have been doing so far, uh, let me know. I'm interested in your opinion. And uh, you can find uh, the previous recordings. Um, sorry that the website uh, link doesn't work anymore. Uh, I've recently changed that to links. So here you can get all the links in one place. Uh, do I still refer to website in, in the stream? No, I do not. Um, but uh, if you intuitively used website um, I think I should re-enable this this uh, command as well and uh, welcome wild folks by the way uh, nice to have you here um, I guess that's all for today yeah I'm running out of things to talk about except if there's something you'd like to talk about is there any question you have is there anything you'd like uh, me to know or to um, explain something. So um, I'm pretty relaxed today since my family is out of the house. They are out camping. I'm not sure when they are going to return. Um, but uh, it's so nice to have uh, the house to myself and a quiet environment to stream. So if you'd like to chat a bit more, uh, I'll be more than happy to do that. And I'll just leave you a minute to do so. If not, um, we'll shut this down for today. I guess I at least I can keep talking until until I've emptied my mug here. Oh, welcome FC Diamond to the stream. I just uh, noticed you there in the activity feed. Thanks for following. I really appreciate any follower I have. And I'm pretty happy to see so many people on a Sunday morning. So... Let me add this um, website command again, and I guess I'll simply write my website is no. Fullstacksensei.com. You can get other relevant links with the bang links command. Okay, we have the website command back. Let's see if it works. Nice.
And I should add the Discord server to the link section as well. Okay, that's done as well. So folks, thank you to everyone for um, watching. I hope you have a great Sunday and um, I'll see you back on Tuesday morning. I sh I'm switching to a morning schedule um, and I'm going to do my next live stream on Tuesday morning at 10 a.m. Ireland and uh, UK time. Until then, I'll see you. Take care.